Welcome to Down in Front. I'm Andy Neitzert. We are returning after two weeks. Joel, I missed you. Oh. Uh, yeah, so uh, Logan and I went to California and we saw Shutter Island at the Arclight Dome Theater where we met the Noel. I have to mention the Noel. Oh, okay. Because the Noel was a concession guy at the Arclight who was really, really cool. And, uh, anyway, so we saw Shutter Island there, and so this episode we're reviewing Shutter Island and The Crazies and Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we'll start with a little bit of Shutter Island. So, uh, what, what did you think there? Um, well this, I, I gotta say, Martin Scorsese, the last couple of movies that he's done, I've really liked. Um, old stuff, not really... Not super into. I mean, I appreciate that they're good films, mm-hmm. but they didn't move me the way that like a lot of people just really got into his stuff. Um, and this one was kind of the same way. Like I saw it, and I'm like, "This is a really great film. The music is just amazing, and and the story was really cool." But it just seemed like it was a little too long, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, without spoiling anything, it drops little hints here and there about what the big you know twist is. Mm-hmm. And there is, and there is a decent twist in it. I mean, yeah, it's a very Shyamalan twist, but done well. Right. It's not one of those, you know, look, we got you sort of things. You it's know, like, ooh, the bad guy was nature. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was the twist, um, but no, it was. You know, it, it was very smartly written. It was, you know, the acting was really great. I like. Well, let's see. Man, there's a whole bunch of people in here. Without just going through and naming them all, I mean, the acting's top notch. The set pieces are great. The music is great. But for me, it kind of drug out along a little bit in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess it wasn't even the middle. It was towards, you know, right before. Are you doing all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was right about probably a half an hour before the whole thing ended. Um, there's a whole lot of exposition, you know, kind of catching you up to speed on things. And for me, that just it, it didn't play as well as the rest of it. You know, I lost my tension. I lost. I, it, it didn't really do it for me. There was a stylistic decision in this movie that bugged me, and Logan Lo, Logan spent the whole movie going, "No, I meant to do it like that." And Logan and, and, and my friend Chris, who saw it with us, was uh, was like, "Oh no, they they meant to do it that way." And that was the editing, mm-hmm. and the editing, and like I'm an editor, but uh, I don't like to notice editing. Mm-hmm. And in this movie, it was all about kind of you know losing your mind, sort of. It was about crazy people, right? Um, and they they chose. I hope they chose to do this. Um, because it was edited by Scorsese's editor, who's she's, she's got to be like a hundred now. <laughs> um, but she edited this, and I was like, either she is losing her mind, or they meant to do this because it was like they would have a shot of somebody, and they would cut away to virtually the exact same shot, but like a foot and a half to the right or something. Mm-hmm. There'd be like these really weird cuts where it would go from one to almost the exact same shot, but there was an obvious cut. And Logan and Chris were both like, "Oh no, they meant to do that. They meant to do that." Like, because they're trying to convey this, you know, uh, crazy thing, but right. but it got so annoying that it wasn't it wasn't like, oh, this is such a cool stylistic choice. It was like it took, completely took me out of it, and I actually was like complaining for the first for the whole first act when they were doing this, like just nonstop. And um, whether it was a, a conscious choice or not, it was annoying because editing is supposed to not be noticed. You know, you're, sp- right. you're supposed to be. In- Do you think in you it. noticed it more just because you? Do editing because I mean I no, didn't notice I honestly, anything like that. I honestly think that if if you were really paying attention to the movie, you would catch the fact that you know there's just like these awkward. I really don't pay attention to movies. Yeah, so. it was just awkward. You're like right here, and then suddenly you're eh, over a little bit. It was right. just it was jarring. Um, but I mean, it was you know it was it was probably on purpose because his editor's a really good editor and and. Um, but again, maybe she's getting older. That's the thing, though, is in this movie they're talking about like once you're labeled as crazy, anything you do, you're still going to be labeled crazy. Mm-hmm. Once you're labeled great, 
even if you are doing some sucky things, are you still going to be labeled great? What a twist. I don't know. I still thought it was a good movie. I mean, it's one of the oh, better no, I, movies I've seen, and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I just, so the, I mean, to really get down to it without just saying, it was great, go see it. I mean, there are just a couple of little things, and I mean, they really are little things. This is, this is a really great movie. Um, I, I can't say that I'll probably see it uh, again anytime soon, mm. um, just because once that initial, you know, hits you with the facts comes out, you know, when everything's revealed, I mean, you don't really have to think about it and go, you know, oh, you know what, I need to see that again. You know, like how many more times can you see Sixth Sense unless you're watching it with somebody who's never seen it and right. has not been had the end spoiled for you? He was dead the whole time. Whoa. Um, so the uh, yeah, the, the what's good? The good thing about the twist is that even if you predict it, like Logan and I got it about, I don't know, about half an hour in or something. And, yeah. Um, but there were so many details that you, even if you got the main twist, there were so many details that you didn't get, like that you didn't know if this was real or you didn't know if, uh, you know, the, whatever. Um, but I want to mention uh, some of the makeup effects in this was just, was just absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, um, um, Casey Jones. K yeah, Casey Jones, Elias Cateus, and, and, uh, John Jack. Lee, what's his name? Who? What's it? The, the Jackie the, Earl Haley. Him, Jackie Earl Haley, the new Freddy Krueger. So uh, he looked really good because he had been he'd been like pummeled, his face had been pummeled. So there was like everything was swollen, but like permanently swollen. There was like pieces you could tell there was like pieces of broken face bone like floating <laughs> around, and it was really cool. Um, and the performances were absolutely incredible. And, and do you know? Do you remember the, the name of the guy who played his uh, partner? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, Chuck. He, he's in a bunch of things, um, but he was really good. he was surprisingly good. Usually, he's this really stupid side character that isn't very good. But I enjoyed him a lot, and and uh, the one-liners from the trailer just keep. Uh, that's that's the thing is this movie got pushed back so much, and we have seen the trailer over and over and over again. Yeah, I've seen this trailer and, since this show started. Right, and. Every time that, that we see it, it's always, I, I, I don't know if they pulled the cheesiest lines out of it on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's an island, but a criminally insane. You know? <laughs> He's got to be at the, the big cigar. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, that's just, it's just, they really just busted out the silliest parts of it. And it's really, I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a downer of a movie, you know? I mean, and it's it, these cheesy things that are coming up. I heard a lot of people when it was first out because um, we're a little bit behind on this one. Mm -hmm. um, when it first came out, a lot of people were saying it's a throwback to the old, um, you know, horror movies, and it's, you know, screw it. It, it's really not a throwback to anything except for, like, the costumes and maybe the the, the, the period of it. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, I mean, it's as slick as anything right now. It's um, It doesn't go into the whole... Um, um, like with the old horror movies and things like that, you got a whole lot of gore factor no matter what, even if it was a psychological sort of thing. This, you get like one or two real big shots where it's just disturbing visuals. But otherwise, I mean, uh, they keep it pretty tame. It was very Hitchcockian horror. You yeah. know, it was, it was, what they don't show you is just as scary as what they show you. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really interesting and, and, and really well shot. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was really happy with it. Yeah. So I would I would recommend seeing it before it leaves the theaters in a couple of weeks. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah. So we got one more minute to kill. Oh, okay. Look at our plants. <laughs> Look at them. Plant. That's how we're going to kill a minute. And uh, let's see. I think this one's real. This is a Douglas fir. <laughs> I think. I don't know. These are fake. Fake Douglas firs. This is a Douglas <laughs> fir over here. This is a bonsai plant down here. Bonsai. I don't know. There we go. Is that a minute? And Shutter Island was great. Shutter Island. Go see it. <laughs> Look at our plants. It's like they evaporated straight through the walls. It's like a plant for a criminal in shade. The mental hospital. <laughs> anyway, what do we see again? Nobody's talking. It's like they're scared of something. <laughs> We'll green screen the entire trailer later. Yay! <laughs> Whose phone is ringing? All right. That was the timer for you. Oh. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're done. done. Yeah, next one. Uh, what's next? Next. Uh, crazies? Crazies. Crazies. It's crazy. Crazies. The crazies, if you haven't seen the trailer, is uh, uh, about a town that gets 
so diseased and they go crazy and kill everything. It's a town for a criminally insane. Yeah, yeah it's like their uh, minds evaporated straight through the wall. <laughs> uh, Timothy Oliphant, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. I, I hate him. I like Timothy Oliphant. I think he's really good. He's probably one of my favorite. He can play the, a really, really good villain and a really, really good like leading hero guy. Mm -hmm. And I really, really liked him in this. The, the, the idea behind this is that a plane has crashed releasing this toxin that, that you know, starts making people go crazy and killing people. And the, you know, this has been done many, well, many, many times. it's a remake. Times. Yeah, it's so a remake yeah, it's of, of Romero's uh, uh, crazies. And, uh, but this one is done really well because the, it's, it's, why is it done well? <laughs> it's your show, man. How are these plants doing? It's a bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, did you think it was done really well? Why is well, this not because, okay. just horror movie of the week? Because you can make you can make a horror movie where uh, you know somebody goes crazy and then dismantles everybody in town, mm -hmm. um, like the, uh, Thirty Days of Night. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like a movie where a town kind of implodes on itself, right? And um, it's not a zombie flick, although it's very similar um, in where people are just pretty much. Out of their mind. Well, they're trying to sell it as a zombie flick is the problem. Yeah, I agree. This thing has been marketed as like the, you know, it's a it's a Romero remake. And actually, they don't even mention Romero. But nope. you see in the, in the trailer and in every promotional thing I've seen, it's always been like, it's like, fear thy neighbor. Here comes one dude whose face is all messed up. And there's this creepy kill here. And that's really like the very tiniest part of this whole movie. Mm -hmm. It's focused on a, a core group of people from the town. And you really do get this sense that people are just going crazy rather than, you know, oh, no, a toxic waste, you know, spilled out and it rained into the graveyard. And now you got, you know, all kinds of crazy people mm -hmm. coming up. And that's really where I thought this thing was successful was was in just building that part up. Now, that also was the problem for me because I can't stand Timothy Oliphant. And so I'm sitting there watching here and, and, and he shows up and he's like, you know, the, the sheriff of the town, which I didn't buy. And... I really just wanted him to get killed, just because I want him in real life to get killed. And, <laughs> but I can see how somebody would react, you know, positively to him. He ruined the Hitman movie, and it wasn't his fault. Well, still. Um, <laughs> but the one thing that I didn't really dig on was their reliance on the jump out and scariest stuff, and because. Most of the time, that stuff doesn't get me, and I think that that's mostly just a cop out when it's when it's not a build up of tension into you know like something happening. It's just nothing, 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 and then loud music, boom, you know, cat jumps out and scares you. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of going on with this one and the and the uh, the Deuce X Machina with the bullet coming through the window or coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. How many times did a bullet come out of nowhere and save the day? I mean. Somebody's just about to get brutally murdered. It's like, uh-oh, it's game time. Here we go. And boom, there's a gunshot. And where did it come from? I don't know. Oh, it's There's a lot of right place, right time stuff that gets kind of annoying. Yeah, but I mean, the good thing about it, though, is even though all that, you know, jump out and scare you stuff and the, and the bolts come out of nowhere, it really did succeed in building up a lot of tension in points, which you don't see anymore. I mean, with, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of dated, but... With like the um, the slasher flicks of of the mid '90s and, and early part of 2000, and then with like all the Saw movies and all that, it's you don't really get any tension with that. I mean, yeah, the, somebody's in a trap. Whoop de doo. You still know they're either gonna die, or um, you're gonna cut away before they die. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something gruesome. This one you are supposed to care about these people, and they're going through an extenuating circumstance. And what's really cool for me is when the military comes in. And then you don't even have any zombies. It's it's all people versus people stuff. Yeah. And there's supposed to be social commentary stuff like Romero did, but really I didn't catch a whole lot of that. Well, the formula is so basic. It's you know it, it, almost down to the you know the friend who gets sick who sacrifices himself, and the, the uh, you know the bad government that comes in, and then you know who are willfully killing people who may or may not be sick and. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 been done so many times, and this one was done well, though. I, yeah, I think it's it's. All, all, I've I've grown to <coughs> accept the fact that no movie is going to be not unlike something else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost impossible, except our movie. Right. So, uh, um, the the concept is good. 
because it works. Mm -hmm. And if the film is done well, I don't care if I've seen it before. And I've gotten to that point right. where I can't change the way they make these movies. So I might as well enjoy the ride um, the way they've done it. Right. So I think that one, this one was done pretty well. The, the best review that I've seen anywhere was we were walking out of the theater and somebody behind me said, uh, every time that stuff be popping out, I was scared. That's and the best review. That's yeah. the best review I've seen. And actually, if you think about it, how much time have we got? You got enough time for me to explain scared? Okay. Yeah. Um, it it kind of makes sense, you know, because jumping out and scary stuff really isn't scary. It's more of a surprise. Uh -huh. So if we kind of combine those two, we've got kind of almost a buildup of tension into a surprise, then you get scared. And you, you know, because you got your, you see what I did there? Yeah. And that's, that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm going to use it from now on on the show. Um, trademark me. And, uh, but that really does make sense because it's really not a scary movie. It's more of a jump out and scare you sort of thing. A yeah. little bit of tension, but not anything that's really going to like send you home with nightmares or anything. But I didn't like the false skirt. Yeah. You know, the, the, bah, oh, it's just you. Yeah. You know, like, touch. It's like, why? Why do you approach somebody? Your, your town is under attack by these crazy people and you're, wilf you're, you're like killing people left and right. Yeah, why say hi. You, why would you sneak up on somebody and go, bah! And then have them go, ah! Oh, and swing around with a gun. Like, yeah. you're going to get yourself killed. Or if then. somebody is like trying to be quiet and hiding somewhere, mm -hmm. instead of going up and, and being like, you know, shh, yeah, we, we totally got to go. Just grab them, you know, cover their face. Mm -hmm. And then be like, and then got to turn a little bit while they're fighting you. Yeah. That, I'd be like, gun, shoot. <laughs> yeah, they did that a couple times. Yeah, it was, it was a very scurry movie. Yeah. And there were some really, really dumb rednecks in it. The Hunters. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about audience. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> well, it was probably the same people. Yeah, probably. Anyway, the, the, uh, there, were these, there were these hunters, and they were like these quintessential redneck hunters who like to kill things who ultimately end up killing It was like the guys at the end of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the, one of the few things i got to put yeah. in there. So, Are we ready for Alice? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? <laughs> awesome. How much time? Let's jump into Alice. One minute. We're going to jump into Alice. Yeah, we are. So uh, last night we saw Alice in Wonderland, finally. Um, we were, I was really excited to see this movie until I saw it. Um, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is Tim Burton's rendition of Alice Through the Looking Glass, I think is the one that it is. Yeah. And uh, it's like 13 years after she originally went to Wonderland, and the Red Queen has taken over, and... You know, she's, Alice is supposed to slay the Jabberwocky and free Wonderland from the tyranny. Wonderland. Whatever. It's not to. Wonderland. That's, that's dumb. That's kids. It's anyway, kid stuff. You're right. It was pretty dumb. So, um, but it was, I'm a huge Tim Burton fan, and I, and I really enjoy most everything that he's done. Uh, I was wholly disappointed with this one. Like, I was, it was just... It was just boring. It was this big CG orgasm all over the screen, and that's all it was. It was like virtually everything was CG, with the exception of the scenes where they're not in Wonderland, and they're not, uh, yeah, and uh, even Alice, because she had to change sizes, was CG a lot. Yeah. And Crispin Glover, I gotta mention Crispin Glover, because I think he was probably one of my favorite characters in the movie, which is sad, because he wasn't really that powerful of a character. No. But he was, he was one of my favorites. He was, like, his whole body was CG, but his head wasn't, or, or, or vice versa. His head was, like, planted on this animated yeah, it's body. it's just his head. That's and the that only was, part of it. that was room. so irritating, because he could have easily just been Crispin Glover, because he, he's tall and lanky, and I think his the, character is just a little bit taller and a little bit lankier, so it, it was... Yeah, he's just, like, his torso's stretched just a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I can understand that they'd want to do it that it's just a little bit off-putting, but... You know, you can do that. Lord of the Rings showed us that we can we can do different sizes of people without having to CG everything up because it just makes it look fake. Exactly. And that is kind of the, the main thing that was the problem with Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. My main issue was that it was supposed to be another story, or at least that's what it was told to me. It was like, this is another, you know, this is Alice going back. But... It didn't seem like that because she went through a lot of the same things that she was supposed to be going through in the first one. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
they realized that they had done this before, and you hear like some weird ADR voiceover. It's like, how come she doesn't remember this? Because it's poor writing, mm -hmm. you know? Just because you want to put that scene that you love from whatever version of Alice, and this took a lot of cues from the Disney version. I mean, you could see, it was like somebody was watching the Disney version and said, we need to make it look like this. This was not something that I really think was just Tim Burton's vision of it. Mm -hmm. It does say Walt Disney on the front of it, and I think <clears throat> that he had to tie it back to that. And I don't know if studio stuff got involved with it or not, but it's just, it's, it's off it's it's off a little bit mm -hmm. you know like you want it to be tim burton's like everybody's yeah. really excited because it's got his name on it it is though i, I know I, I read that that tim burton had kind of free reign with this i'm pretty sure um they meant that disney didn't have a lot of hand in it disney i don't know disney kind of lets tim burton do what he wants because mm -hmm. tim burton's kind of earned it right um but th this this was then he probably watched that movie too many times because I would have, I mean, when you, when you just read the books, which I didn't do, um, you might have done so, mm -hmm. but when you just read it, you're not, you're not picturing the Disney thing in your head, hopefully, if you're trying to create your own vision of it. And so I was looking forward to, like, you know, twisty trees and, you know, that general Burton feel, and I didn't get that. Yeah, it um, was very subtle, but it, w it was barely there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I didn't think that it was horrible. I thought it, there were a lot of pretty things on screen. I think, uh, you know, the story, I, there's all kinds of different versions of Alice in Wonderland, and there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. It's a cool story. But one thing that I really liked was that, like, people in, those, in, the, in, the, in the stories, they're talking in, like, quizzical sort of ways, and, and everything's just a little bit, little bit weird, like asking questions, or you know how they have that weird interplay um, where it's... Like some certain characters just speak in com in riddles, mm -hmm. you know. That's the kind of stuff that I like. Like trying to follow that, um, and you don't get any of that. It's like, you know, even the characters that are supposed to be insane, um, all they do is like throw stuff. You know, they don't speak in these cool riddles or anything like that. Uh, the caterpillar, who in the Disney version, was really confusing, even you know, just by the way that he talked. And this caterpillar was just kind of a D. Yeah. You know? He's like, really, what's your problem, Alice? Why don't you go, like, save the day? He didn't really do anything either. Yeah. He was just kind of there. He was there three or four times, and he said three or four lines, and then he was gone. That's and every character in this. Yeah. It was all, like, like that's what I meant by the CG orgasm. It was like, look what we can do. Here's this, and then this, and then this, and this. And even subtle little, and I, I'll come back, I'm coming back to the CG thing, but it was like, subtle little things like, Johnny Depp's eyes, they enlarged a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, of course, you know, Helena Bonham Carter's head is enormous. And, and, uh, but it was like, it was completely unnecessary. And I think uh, uh, Wonderland is crazy enough that it can, it can be done really well. There was yeah. one, there was a musical version done in the early 80s that I really enjoyed um, that had like the Caterpillar with Sammy Davis Jr. And, <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was really kind of, I mean, it was kind of, it was turned into a musical, so it was kind of a throw off of, uh, of the book, but it was actually really enjoyable. And like the Jabberwocky was this like really cool, like it was a practical creation. So it was, and it was actually really scary. Is that the one where she's in the house by herself and the, and yeah. the and it just shows up? Yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty cool. That was awesome. And that scared me when I was a kid. It scared the crap out of me. You know what scared me is the Alice that's like, the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, yeah. the, the, the Spanish. Said the white is rabbit. It Spanish? No, German? it's, no, it's, it's not. It's not it's Spanish not. or German. It's like, no, you're right. Yeah, it is in English. Well, no, it's dubbed. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's not got a lot of stop, It's got a lot of stop motion. Yeah, a lot of stop motion, and it's just really creepy and weird. And that was kind of more of the thing I was thinking of that Tim Burton's version would be. Exactly. Be a little darker, be a little scarier. If he had made it then, I think that's exactly what he would have come up with. Right. Because it's like it, it really... Kind of, it, it's like you want it to. It's driving you crazy. Right. Like you're watching. You're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. In fact, exactly. we watched it when I was in when I was in film school. They wa we watched it in psychology, mm -hmm. to as an example of using psychology. In How film. to drive someone insane? Because you sat there, and, and and my wife and I'll sit at home, and every now and then we'll just be like, da, 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 said the white rabbit, <laughs> and it was the creepiest thing. Yeah. But yeah, those those versions. Even the musical version that was, I think, even made for TV, right. was was where you got you got into it so much more, right. and the characters were so much more likable. This one, everybody's so temporary and kind of irritating. And yeah. I got I got really annoyed. And the Jabberwocky is this giant CG dragon, and it wasn't scary. It was just kind of stupid. He looked like 
the dragon that's on that new movie, that new dragon movie that's coming out. The How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. That's what he looked like. He looked like the cartoon character. Synergy. Yeah. What that's called. He looked like this cartoon character that just I didn't care about. It, I think it was a good idea, putting Tim Burton in charge of an Alice in Wonderland movie. I think that maybe Tim Burton might have lost a little bit of his cojones, maybe his edge. Mm-hmm. Like he's afraid to do something that's going to be dark and upsetting because he's got all these movies under his belt that are family friendly and things like that, you mm-hmm. know? Um, it was really wholly disappointing as far as like a Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland. I still think it's a strong version of Alice in Wonderland, but it was disappointing in that I didn't get what I thought was possible yeah. from this thing. I think he could have easily done it in, in more of a Nightmare Before Christmas Corpse Bride style. Not necessarily stop motion, but just utilizing more practical effects instead of just all computer-generated crap. Right. Because, I mean, you can't get... I, I don't think you can get the same performances out of actors if they're all just in a green screen all the time. Just it, staring it, at a tennis ball? Exactly. It just It's not the same. You, you need to have that that interaction, and it's more believable when they're actually there instead of just phoning it in. Right. And I think that's what a lot of the people, like especially Helena Bonham Carter, who's really just exactly like she is and everything else, and... Yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, overall, decent version of Alice in Wonderland. Not the best. Mm. It's actually, from all the versions I've seen, it's probably the worst. You think so? Yeah. I've seen, like, even the really creepy stop motion. That one I still think is one of my, I mean, even though I hate it, it's one of my favorites. Mine too. Yeah. Because it's it's definitely an, an awesome rendition of the story. We'll have to look... Well, maybe we'll throw up a like the actual name or whatever, mm-hmm. so that people can. It's check Alice. That one out. The, the film's called Alice. Right, but I mean, just to help our wonderful yeah. viewers out. To, sure. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's uh, yeah. Don't go see this one. Um, <laughs> I slept through the, most of the last <coughs> ten minutes. I, I I was awake, but like I nod off because it was just so incredibly boring. Um, and Anne Hathaway's eyebrows and lips creeped me out like the whole time. Uh, that's about it. So uh, that's our show for this week. Uh, we're back. I'm so stoked to keep going, and um, we have down in front shirts now, so if you want one, $47, please, because <laughs> we only have 10 of them. <laughs> 47 bucks. Uh, yeah, no, check, it out. check us out on Facebook, search for Down in Front, downinfront.blip.tv to watch this and every other episode. Special thanks to Mackenzie's Seafood and Steaks, Hollywood Theaters, Ragtag Cinema, Gotcha Costumes. And our newest underwriter, Tiger Embroidery, for the t-shirts. Thanks very much. And we will see you next week.